everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be diving into a few new releases that launched in the last couple weeks and uh, you guys know I've been pretty much on vacation for a month and I'm finally back and I'm back to filming and there has been so many new products launched and released and the best way for me to get all of these reviews out is to kind of condense them into one. So in this video I'm going to be testing out the new uh, bronzing cream from Sai. It, this is called the Sun Melt and it's a bronzing cream. So I'm going to test this out. Of course I will swatch it next to other bronzing creams that I have in my collection so you guys can kind of see the shade that I picked up and then also the liquid blushes that they launched and I picked up two shades I have the shade peachy and I have the shade poppy I did miss the Lisa Eldridge blush launch I was like a couple of days late I had completely forgot that she was launching uh cream blushes or I think they're liquid blushes anyway so by the time I got on the website all she had left was the highlighter so I picked up the highlighter and I also picked up two glosses from Lisa Eldridge I did fill out the form where I could be notified when the blushes come back in stock but I missed that launch <laughs> I was too busy having fun traveling I don't know what we were doing at the day that it launched but totally missed it totally spaced it now I also picked up this this is the smaller version of the larger Tarte uh, juicy palette many of you guys know that this has been like my ride or die since I got it and I fell so madly in love with this palette I actually took it on vacation with me. It's like the perfect palette for me Tarte decided to release a smaller version of that larger palette and many of you guys reached out and said, hey, will you try out that new palette? Are they the same shades? I think people were kind of confused as to if these were the same shades. So I thought, you know what? I'll pick up this palette. I will buy it. I will swatch it next to the other shades so that you guys can see that they are the same palette. But this will be more travel friendly because I do love this palette. But anyway, so I'm going to be doing swatches of this palette. Also created a look with it and give you my full opinion on it. So that's what we're doing in today's video. Let's go ahead and jump into the tutorial of me playing with all these products. And then of course we will jump into the swatches and comparisons and then I will get into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. So we're gonna jump into the new bronzer that I picked up from Sai. This is the Sun Melt Natural Cream Bronzer. I picked it up in the shade medium bronze. So you guys know I've recently fallen in love with this new Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. This is in the shade deep bronze. I love this. I used it the entire time I was on vacation. Pretty much the only thing I put on my face as far as bronzer goes. So this is much cheaper than the one from Chanel. Do get uh, one ounce. It's the same exact amount. So the Chanel is just much bigger than this one from Sai, but it's the same exact amount and this one has more shades than the one from Chanel the one from Chanel only has two shades now it took a long time for us to get two shades this one has four shades so it does feel like it is a nice creamy balm yeah that's it oh so I might need a darker shade I don't know we'll see how this builds um let me show you what it looks like next to the to the Chanel one the new shade in the Chanel so this is the new shade in the Chanel and this is the medium bronze. So I might need a darker shade, but my hands are a little bit darker than my face. So we'll see. This is a clean brand at Sephora. So uh, it doesn't have a lot of junk in it. It's all like cruelty free, has a lot of really clean ingredients. So I'm just gonna use the Refer number no. five brush, which is what I normally use when I apply the Chanel product. And I'm just gonna pick some up and I'm gonna put some right here on the face. Okay, so this is three coats, and that gave me a little bit of bronze. Uh, it's a little bit more of a natural bronze. It gave some color, uh, but I might need a darker shade if I want to add, you know, definition with it. But just to kind of lightly bronze the skin and give some color to the skin, this shade works pretty good. But what I will say is that this is a very, very buildable, very easy to use. Like, this builds really easily and it doesn't get kind of gross and muddy. I'm gonna put some right here along the forehead, along the nose. 
Now I haven't put on my concealer yet, so I'm trying not to bring it down too far. So that gave me a really nice bronze. If you're close to my skin tone and you want more definition with your bronzer, then I would go with a darker shade. But if you like a very light, more natural looking bronze, then this is a perfect shade. There's a lot of these bronzing creams out there that the more you build, the more they'll get kind of muddy and they'll just stick onto the skin and they'll ball up and not look good. And this really blended beautifully over the skin. I'm kind of impressed with it, to be honest. Now this would probably be my perfect winter shade, but summer shade, you know, I do have a little bit of a tan because I have been out in the sun. I got me a nice little tan line going on. Though I have been out into the sun, I might need a darker shade for the summer, but, but this is a pretty product. So far, so good. I'm very impressed with it. Now let's use a smaller compacted brush because I was using something that was a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna take this brush. This is from the Sonia G, the new collection. This is the classic base brush. And this is just a, a more of a stubbier kind of like thicker brush. And let's see if I can get a little bit more impact right here on the cheekbone by using a smaller brush because that might change the game to give me more definition. This is not getting muddy at all, like not even a little bit. I'm trying to see what the difference is between these two. Right now, just by swatching them, the difference between the Chanel and this one from Sai, Sai or Sai, I'm not sure how you could say it, but the one from Chanel feels creamier. Uh, it feels much more, it has more of a slip to it uh, versus this one from Sai has more of a uh, a little bit of a satin texture to it, so it's not super emollient. I would definitely say the one from Chanel is much more emollient based. The only thing that concerns me with this shade in particular is that once I powder, I might lose the shade. I might lose some of the dimension that I have going on. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna go ahead and throw in some concealer really fast. Little bit of concealer changes the game, doesn't it? Next up, I have two of their uh, Dew blushes. These are the Liquid Cheek blushes. I picked up the shade Peachy and Poppy. These retail for $22 each. They come in four different shades. And uh, it is a water-based gel blush with a creamy blendable formula that gives the skin a healthy flush of seamless color. It looks like it has a nice doe foot applicator on it. So seems like you can just go directly on the skin with these. And I'm excited to try these. I'm a sucker for cream blushes. You guys know I love cream blushes. They're like my jam. So this is the peach color and this is poppy. The color peachy is described as a light peachy pink and the color poppy is described as a bright coral. I don't like putting stuff like this directly on the skin. I like to put it on the back of my hand and then pick it up with a brush and then apply it on the skin. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna put this much here on the back of my hand of the color Poppy. So I have this clean brush from Refer. This is the number four, and I'm gonna dip into the shade Poppy. Woo, that is bright. So I'm just gonna go in with my sponge and kind of tone it down a little bit. So that looks really pretty. Gave some color to the skin and it applied really pretty. These are kind of emollient based, so they kind of give a shine to the skin, and the reason why I point that out is if you look at this side, so this side doesn't have anything on it. This side, I just applied the product. Well, you can, I have hyperpigmentation on my cheeks, and it's really coming out to play now that I've went out into the sun. Because this has an emollient base to it, it's allowing my hyperpigmentation to come up from underneath my foundation and poke through. So you can see on this side, this side has no hyperpigmentation coming through. There is hyperpigmentation on this cheek. You just can't see it because the foundation is covering it. But when you put on something that has more of an emollient base, 
it will bring it out. So just be careful with emollient base cream blushes if you have hyperpigmentation and you don't want it to come through. Now, if you don't have it, if you don't have hyperpigmentation, then you don't even need to worry about everything I just said <laughs> because it will not affect you in any way, shape, or form. Let's see how peachy looks. I'm going to use the Sonia G Classic Cheek Brush. Uh, because this is undyed goat hair and undyed goat hair is best for uh, creamy products. So I'm just going to apply some of this on this side. Okay, so this shade doesn't show up on my skin much. If I turned off all these lights and I was just in natural daylight, you wouldn't even see this. Like it wouldn't even, you wouldn't even see it. Because the color is lighter it isn't bringing up that hyperpigmentation, but you can see I have all this hyperpigmentation here uh, and I don't have any on this side. I like these, but they might be a little bit too emollient based for me. For example, these from Rare Beauty, these have more pigment, therefore it doesn't leave the skin super shiny. She does have more of a matte formula or more of a dewier formula. And you can see the difference. This is the matte formula and this is the dewy. The difference is, even though this is a dewy formula, it still has enough pigment in it to, to cover the skin without becoming more transparent. These are definitely more on the natural side where uh, they're probably for more of those days where you're not wearing a lot of makeup and you just want to have, you know, some color to the skin. If I'm wearing like a medium to full coverage foundation and I'm wearing cream blushes, I don't want them to be transparent. I want them to have enough pigment to not become so shiny on the skin and allow that hyperpigmentation to come through or allow the texture or redness or anything that you have on your cheeks it will pop through. If you don't have a lot of hyperpigmentation or redness or anything like that on your cheeks, then you will be fine with these. I think this is a beautiful formula. So I'm gonna show you the difference. So I'm gonna take this shade from Tower 28. This is a shade Rush Hour. This is emollient base, just like the ones from uh, Sai. And I'm gonna put it on this side. Now this has more color. So see how the hyperpigmentation didn't come through? Even though it's super shiny, because it's got more color in it, it covers. Same goes for the M Cosmetics liquid blushes. These are just as emollient based as the ones from Sae. If you like the M Cosmetics formula, then I think you'll really like the formula from, from Sae because I feel like they're very, very similar. They're emollient based, but they also don't have a lot of pigment uh, like some of the others that I have. We're gonna move on to the new highlighter that I picked up. This one is from Lisa Eldridge. This is her Seamless Skin collection. And I picked this up in the shade Solar Light. Now I did sign up to be notified when the, when the blushes come back into stock, but it's my fault. I totally missed the launch. Beautiful bottle though. Like her stuff is always just beautiful. This frosted glass, bright gold, I'm here for it. And it is really pretty. It is uh, called Solar Light. And it's so pretty and so natural. That is really pretty. I actually really like that. And it dries, it is super, super thin. I'm excited to try this. So I'm gonna take and put some here on the back of my hand. I'm actually gonna use this brush from uh, Wayne Goss. This is the number five. I am going to apply some of that like right here. Kind of blend it in. Ooh. Okay, so this is a highlighter that is for those of you out there who like a very natural highlight that you don't wanna see it sitting on the skin, but when you turn your head, it will pop. What I also like about it is that you can't see it sitting on the skin. So this particular color was kind of perfect for my skin tone. It's a very lightweight highlighter though. Um, it's not super, super overwhelming. And if you're somebody that's just kind of over the really strong, strong highlights, this is pretty. I mean, this is like a perfect situation. And it blends like right into the skin. Okay, let's move on to the eyes. As many of you guys know, this tart, this tartlet juicy palette, this is the Amazonian clay formula, has been 
my ride or die since it launched. I have used this so many times. It doesn't look like it because there's a lot of product in here, but I've used it countless times. Took it on vacation, used it multiple times there. Uh, this has been a very, very dependable palette for me. Well, I noticed that they launched a mini version of it. So this is the Tartlet Juicy. It's the same palette. It seems like they went ahead and condensed it into a smaller palette. Here's the problem though. This palette is $39 and each shade is 1.5 grams. This palette has 18 grams total worth of product. That makes the smaller palette $2.17 per gram. The larger palette is $45. Each shadow has 1.2 grams worth of product. This entire palette has 24 grams worth of product. This palette's $1.88 per gram and you get 20 shades. This palette is $2.17 per gram and you get 12. Obviously, the larger palette is the better buy, obviously, but it all depends on if you want something this large. That's what it comes down to. If the smaller one is more easy to carry around, easy to travel with, easier to store in your makeup collection. So I think it all comes down to a personal thing. I've used the larger palette enough to know exactly how it blends. It's a very soft, soft, creamy, creamy formula. And I have never once, in all the times that I've picked it up, never had a look that I didn't love. Every time I use it, I love my makeup look. So. It has become a, one of my absolute favorites in my collection from this year that I've purchased. We're gonna go ahead and zoom in and I'm gonna create a look using this smaller palette. I'm gonna first start on the lower lash line. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the shade Petal. I'm gonna start this right here on the lower lash line. And then I'm gonna go ahead using the same brush. By the way, I'm using the Refer number 26 brush. I'm gonna go ahead and carve out my crease with the shade Petal. I'm just kind of going along the bone. And then I'm gonna kind of bring it in to the out, into the eyelid right here on the outer corner. I'm gonna use the same brush and I'm gonna grab this shade right here and I'm gonna focus that right underneath the lash line. I'm gonna do the exact same thing with uh, the darker color, but I'm gonna kind of keep it right on the bone just to add that definition. The other thing that I love about this palette is that I don't really get a lot of fallout either. So it's one of those where I can go in and put concealer on before I go in with this and I don't really have to worry about it messing up my my concealer which I really appreciate that when a palette doesn't have a lot of fallout. Now I'm just going to take kind of a small blending brush and I'm going to go into the shade Petal. Now I'm just going to kind of blend those two shades together right on that brow bone. Just kind of buffing them together. I'm gonna go into my favorite shade from the larger palette, which is the shade Paradise. It is just such a beautiful shade. I'm gonna put some here on my finger. I'm gonna blow off the extra, and I'm just gonna kinda of tap it in place. It is such a pretty shimmer. I love it, and it's so soft on the eye. I just love the way it looks. Now I'm gonna grab the Smith 253 brush, and I'm gonna pick up the shade Paradise and I'm gonna bring that like right and up into the crease, but right, just right there in the opening so that, you know, I have such deep set eyes that I wanna kind of open the eyelids up. I'm gonna go into the shade Reflect, this one right here. I'm gonna bring that right here on the inner corner, kind of brighten things up right here. I am going to put that like right here on the brow bone just a little bit to brighten it up, brighten up its day. Thinking about taking a little bit of the shade Dusk, this one right here, which it is a shimmer shade, just going over top of this outer corner with that shade just to add some of that depth but keep it kind of shimmery on the lid and kind of blending it in. 
Okay, then I'm gonna grab my Sigma Flat Definer. This is the E15 brush. Going to grab this dark shade right here. I am gonna focus that right here on the lower lash line and the upper lash line, but keeping it really close to the outer corner on both upper and lower. Okay, so I went ahead and threw on some mascara. Let's move on to the two lip glosses that I got. This is the shade Affair. Look how beautiful that shade is. Let me show you how gorgeous her glosses are. They are so pigmented and so beautiful. So this is Go Lightly and this is a fair, but look at the pigmentation on these glosses. They've got so much of a base to them. She has great glosses. So I'm gonna first put on the shade Go Lightly, which is that bright coral color. Okay, so that's the shade Go Lightly. This is just one coat. Uh, but this is a really pretty shade, perfect for the summer, but it's not super bright. So it looks super bright in the casing, but it's not like super, super bright. That's so pretty. Now let's try on the next shade. So this is a shade Affair. So this is one coat of the shade Affair. So that's it for the try on portion of the video. Let's go ahead and move on to the swatches. Swatch the, the products that I used in today's video next to the other products. I will swatch the shades that's in the smaller palette next to the shades that are in the larger palette so that you know that they are the same. And then we will jump into my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Now we've made it through the swatches and comparisons. I do hope that those images were helpful for you. Let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts. I do think I'm gonna need a different shade in this for the summer, but I really like the formula. The formula is on point. I had to apply a lot to get what I have and I didn't apply any loose powder. So if I think if I went over my face with loose powder, I probably would have lost a lot of the pigment from this because I just think this is a little bit too light for my skin tone right now, but I think it will be perfect for me in the winter time. As far as the liquid blushes, I think I pretty much went through all of that uh, in my application. I think it's a great formula. If you do have hyperpigmentation, I wouldn't recommend this type of formula unless you're okay with the hyperpigmentation popping through. Like I said, there are days where I'm wearing like a tinted moisturizer and I don't really care if my hyperpigmentation comes in. It is what it is. I kind of own it. But there are days where I'm wearing a medium to full coverage foundation where I want my hyperpigmentation covered. And this is just not a product I would recommend going into if you want to keep it covered. Now, so as far as the smaller version of the Tarte Juicy, this, in my opinion, is exactly the same as the large one. There was no different in the formula. It all blended beautifully. It all applied the same. Just all boils down to if you want the larger palette or the smaller palette, if you are somebody that felt like the larger palette had too much of the same and it was just too much for you and you want something that's smaller and more condensed. Now, as far as the Lisa Eldridge lip glosses and the highlighter, the highlighter is stunning. And like I said, if you are somebody that doesn't want a really blinding highlight, this is the formula. This is where it's at. Now, this is very similar to the Auric uh, from uh, Samantha Ravindel. So if you have this from Samantha Ravindel or you have the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Falls Filter, this is the same type of formula. They are 
um, a little bit more skin-like, a little bit more natural. So I feel like if you already have these formulas, I don't see the need to, to get something like this. If you want something that's a lightweight on the skin, very natural highlight, uh, these, these are the three that I would definitely recommend because they're really, really pretty. As far as the gloss, I think they're really pretty. I did add a little bit of a lip liner just to add some pigment uh, versus just having all of it from the gloss. But... I think her glosses are great. I've always loved her glosses and I think they're great. So no complaints on the glosses. So those are my overall thoughts. Sound off down below in the comment section. Have you guys picked up anything that I've discussed in today's video and what has been your experience? Now, like I've always said, I'm just one person coming on behind a camera. Your experience is just as important as anyone else's. So share with us in the comment section down below. Let us know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.